January 2nd, an email from the Director General of the Institute to all internal staff was circulated. The subject was notice regarding the strict prohibition of disclosure of any information related to the Wuhan unknown pneumonia. National Health Commission clearly mandates that all detection, empirical data, results, and conclusions related to this outbreak cannot be published on self-media or social media, nor disclosed to any media, including state media, or collaborative organizations, including any technical services companies. January 21st, a new drug, Remdesivir, provided for free by the United States to China for Wuhan coronavirus treatment, was preemptively patented by the Institute. February 3rd, Dr. Wu Xiaohua blew the whistle using his real name that Xi Zhengli's haphazard laboratory management may have led the Wuhan virus to leak from the lab. February 4th, Chairman of Duo Yi, Xu Bo, blew the whistle using his real name that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was suspected of manufacturing and leaking the Wuhan virus. February 7th, top biochemical weapon expert of the People's Liberation Army, Chen Wei, officially assumed control over Wuhan Institute of Virology's P4 laboratory. February 14, Chinese leader Xi Jinping called for the inclusion of biosecurity into China's national security framework and to accelerate the introduction of a biosecurity law. February 15, the Institute refuted widely spread rumors on Chinese social media that a female graduate, Huang Yanling, was patient zero and had perished. However, Huang's photo, CV, and thesis were all removed from the Institute's official website, leaving only her name. February 17, Institute researcher Chen Chuan Jiao blew the whistle using her real name that Director General of the Institute, Wang Yanyi, was suspected of leaking the virus. On March 24th, Texas lawyer Larry Clayman filed a complaint in Texas federal court seeking at least $20 trillion from the Chinese government. Clayman said in a statement, quote, The Chinese people are a good people, but their government is not, and it must be made to pay dearly. On April 4th, the British think tank Henry Jackson Society advocated for compensation of 351 billion pounds from the CCP to the UK. And that the government should pursue it through international courts. The same report called for a total compensation of 3.2 trillion pounds to the G7 for the damages caused by the cover-up of the outbreak. On the same day, the All India Bar Association filed a complaint to the United Nations Human Rights Council, seeking an unspecified amount as reparations from China over the global spread of the coronavirus.